Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. I'm very grateful to be joining you today. It is a Tuesday and it is, oh, let's see, the seventh of the month. Maybe the, oh, it's the sixth of the month, isn't it? No, today's the fifth. Ha, that's good. I can still keep track of the time. So thank you for joining me today. I'm going to get up for a second and turn on this light. That should improve the lighting a lot. Yes, it does. Good. <clears throat> so thank you for joining. I have been enjoying myself getting back from the retreat yesterday. For all those that were uh, blessed enough to join, you received a huge blessing uh, from this book, The Greatest Love. I sent that blessing uh, by putting a treasure into the book. And then uh, used the power in that book to offer everybody a blessing. And it was quite large. Several of the people had third eye readings and uh, could see quite a bit of light and crystal come in and serve. So today, however, we're going to be focusing on the four keys to a peaceful life. And for those that happen to see the, um, the uh, trailer that I put out this morning, the uh, little advertisement, it showed the four monkeys. So that was just a little clue as to what you can expect the conversation was going to be about today. <clears throat> so as people are gathering, let's see. Aloha, Ilona. Thank you for tuning in from the UK where it's midnight. Welcome, uh, Stephen Smith. Welcome also, Kathy. And welcome, Master Elizabeth. Aloha, Igor. And welcome also to Jennifer. Aloha, Kristen Rojas. Welcome, Carol Federico and Tammy J. Aloha. Duiba, good to see you here. Welcome, Richard. And aloha also to Sharon Dodd. Natasha Hoy, great to see you all. Thank you so much for joining. <clears throat> so today, uh, one of the reasons I chose this subject for today was because in Master Shah's teachings, uh, always he is spoken about how to purify the soul, how to be... Um, a more, more pure uh, individual so that we can not only be, uh, have a, a happier, healthier life, uh, heal ourselves and, and, and heal all aspects of our life, but to be, um, to be honorable not only to ourselves but externally, outside of ourselves. And <clears throat> he has announced that more clearly or most clearly in the... Uh, the ten da, which is a word that means the ten greatest. The ten greatest what? The ten greatest qualities, the ten greatest virtues. Uh, and so through the ten greatest qualities and virtues, there is a theme. And that theme actually aligns to today's teaching on the four keys for a peaceful life. So I will tie all that together today, and that's what you can expect. So for anyone tuning in new for the first time, uh, that will be what you can expect as far as the wisdom and blessings. Welcome also to Natasha. Welcome M.A. Drade. Aloha uh, Najma Saeed. And uh, welcome Angie Taylor. Aloha Kristen Strachan. <coughs> welcome uh, Sh uh, Sharon Dot. I think I mentioned you. Aloha Emily Cox. Uh, welcome Christine Marie. Aloha Judy Thompson. And Donna Boana. Welcome. And aloha Bonnie Hart. Haven't seen you in quite a while, Bonnie. Good to see you here. Aloha, Rian. It's great to meet you and Alosha up in Canada. Uh, and aloha, Dolores. So um, today, when I thought about delivering this message, I, I actually may have to put it into two days because it's not a small... Um, you, one could take each one of these four keys and expand upon it for a week. Truly. Uh, so I may, uh, depending on how the information comes out, <clears throat> stretch this out over two days at the very least to see if we can get the most value out of this uh, wisdom. So let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. We're going to place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. And we drop the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand remains gently pointed towards heaven. 
We close our eyes and we fully connect, and I will invite in all the beings of light. There are beloved divine creator, all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, all masters and ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, all Buddhas and bodhisattvas, there are beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, their beloved Namo Amitofu, Lingui Sheng Shi Kuan Yin. Our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you, honor you, respect you. I bow down to all of you. I ask most humbly and sincerely for your presence today to come to sit in each and every one of our hearts, come to bless this practice, this wisdom, this teaching. There's a soul of the four keys to a peaceful life. Any wisdom that can best be shared, could you please come at this time? Assist me in sharing this wisdom in the highest and best way to awaken the most hearts and the most souls, to release the Shen Qi Jing blockages that inhibit us all from aligning further to our soul, heart, mind, and body. <clears throat> Dear the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes. We love you, we honor you, we deeply appreciate you. We ask that you please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to please come at this time to chant with us and offer this unconditional service. There are quite a few new people jumping in, so for those that are new, I have just called forth the beings of light and I will now chant a mantra called Love, Peace, and Harmony. It is a healing mantra. It is a very special gathering tool to gather souls and to bring love, peace, and harmony. It is also a blessing, so you can make an individual request. And for those who wish to join in, let us chant together. <coughs> Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula ha li lula, lula li lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling, wo ai zi ran ran li, wang li rong er mu shi shang, shang ai ping on he xie. Shang Ai Ping on her she. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> how, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, as indicated, this song is a song that has actually been translated into over 40 languages. You can learn more at lovepeaceharmony.org and be a part of the solution, so to speak. It's a song that carries extraordinarily high frequencies. And you can learn more. Kristen Rojas is, is uh, my key support person, and she uh, puts a lot of postings in her, so you can follow her posts and see a lot of valuable information. So thank you, Kristen. So let me back up a second here. So welcome also to uh, Crane. Good to see you, Crane. Aloha, Janice. Welcome, Ferdy. Aloha, Anjali Flauta. <coughs> welcome also to Susan uh, Birchmore and Denise Oliski. Aloha Pat, Aloha Brent David Hunton, and welcome Lemke Mark. Welcome also to Crystal and Robin, and Aloha to uh, Emmy Martinez, uh, Angela Diacomo, and Krishma Tilak. Welcome Aloha Elizabeth, welcome Sherry Hines, and welcome also to uh, Candy Cornette. If I missed you, missed your name, forgive me. Big blessings to you. Thank you for coming. So today, <clears throat> the four keys to a peaceful heart. The first thing is to work the statement backwards. What is a peaceful heart? What causes a peaceful heart? What can create an unpeaceful heart? 
Most of us, when we think of the heart, we think of love. We think of the physical heart, heart attack, or we think of love and relationship. Uh, and this is a, a common default. The heart leads the mind. The mind then leads the energy, and the energy leads the matter. For the vast majority of humanity, the mind has been the leader. And it basically pushes out the heart, which always knows better. There is a leader of the heart. There is a predecessor to the heart, and that is the soul. The four keys to a peaceful heart, in order to, to work with these four keys, you must first recognize <clears throat> that the heart must be nurtured, it must be honored. And when I say the heart, I'm not talking about your physical heart, I'm talking about the heart of your soul. The soul, as you know, lives forever. We do not. Therefore, the soul carries forth all of the positive and negative messages from all lifetimes. And that impacts our, our heart in this life. We always have choice as to what we allow into our world. The four keys that allow us to control the peacefulness of the heart are related to what is often termed the four evils. Why then did I not say that this live stream was about the four evils? Because that's not what it's about. It's about perspective. There are four great potential virtues available to us. When it says, see no evil, how can we say that differently? See those things that we choose to see that are beneficial, loving, kind, generous, easy on our eyes. Things that are not unpleasant. Things that are not hurtful. This creates a peaceful heart. See no evil. Instead, we say, see only that which is beautiful and of value. What about hear no evil? What's a different way to say that? We can listen with our soul. We can listen with our heart. We can make conscious choices to not hear things that are not beneficial to us. Speak no evil. What's a different way to say that? Communicate with love. Communicate with compassion. Communicate from your heart. And the final one, think no evil. When we think, we fail to recognize that it is the predecessor of almost everything that we bring into our life. Our thoughts are the initiation of our creation of our life. So what are the four keys to a peaceful heart? They are thinking. Okay, I am back. I had to clear some blockages. Apparently this message is very, very important. I'm doing this on a 4G signal with all five bars. And I'm in a location where I've been hundreds of times, no interruptions. So isn't it unusual that when I talk about such an important subject that it is interrupted? This is the nature of positive and negative energies and frequencies. This is the nature of how do we bring ourselves to life to have a peaceful heart. When this happened in the past, I would be very frustrated. This time, I kept a peaceful heart. I simply sent blessings to uh, clear the blockages so that I can continue this communication with you. So we always have an opportunity on how we respond and we react to things. When we hear things that are unpleasant to hear, we often speak things that are equally unpleasant. How is that beneficial to a peaceful heart? The answer is it's not. So we must be a lot more conscious. The path to having a peaceful heart starts with aware consciousness 
awareness of first our thoughts of second what we are translating those thoughts before we speak them or do any actions then as we speak them we must monitor is this words that are being spoken coming with the greatest love and the greatest compassion or are they sharp and they barbed are they laced with my pain are they laced with my irritation are they laced with my need for attention are they laced with anything that is other than unconditional love this is where consciousness comes in when we speak in an unpleasant way already we have an unpeaceful heart <clears throat> so then we have to go backwards from there why do we have an unpeaceful heart why do we want to say these unpleasant things somewhere we are hurt Otherwise, we would not say something unpleasant. So we have to go to the point of the hurt. It has created an unsettled and an unpeaceful heart. We must have heard something, right? Speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil. We must have heard something from somebody else. And we received what we had heard. Maybe we saw something from somebody else and presumed a, ser a series of, of uh, assumptions based on what we saw and it created an unpeaceful heart uh, it's possible that maybe we thought something about uh, something ar around us or outside of us and that created an unpeaceful heart these are the predecessors to speaking out so there are literally two sides to this coin one is the receiving of the information. The other is the external output of the information. And both actually can create a lack of a peaceful heart. Both are karmic, of course, but both can create a lack of a peaceful heart. So what is coming in? Seeing things that are unpleasant, violence, um, gore, blood. Uh, I, you know, personally, when it comes any, as soon as October 1st hits, literally it's like somebody turns on a faucet and the airwaves of the television and whatever else out there is flooded with all things ugly. It's just very, very, very ugly for a full month. And all of a sudden they flip the switch right after that and immediately go into Thanksgiving mode, oh, hunky dory and Christmas and try to sell you new things. So we are constantly, as human beings, inundated by things that we see. What about when you're, uh, when you, uh, if you watch TV, uh, watching TV or the, or the internet or anything that's on our phones, when we are uh, basted with unpleasant commercials, okay? They say unpleasant things. They show us unpleasant images. Uh, and the more um, uh, graphic, the more of a jolt it has to our system. These create inputs that create unpleasantness. Have you ever listened to um, <clears throat> uh, a, a speech or a, um, a music and all of a sudden there's really high feedback and, and just screeches and it's very, very unpleasant? Well, this is very much what happens to your heart, to your soul, when unpleasant things come to your ears and to your eyes, when there are unpleasant thoughts. These kinds of interruptions create uh, blockages in the heart they create an unpleasant condition a condition in which we are not peaceful so how can we act out peacefully speak peacefully think loving things speak loving things if our input is not taken care of we have to be responsible for what's coming in before we can uh, uh, have a effective shift on what's going out we can we can shift what's going out. Yes, we can. But um, the purity of the message going out cannot be any higher of a frequency than the purity of what's coming in because the heart operates at that same uh, frequency. And so whatever's coming in creates a frequency in our heart of love, compassion, forgiveness, light, humility, service, gratitude, all of the ten das that Master Shah has brought to humanity. Uh, 
and then that raises our frequency. Therefore, we speak, communicate, think, offer thoughts, words, and actions in a loving higher frequency. But if we are not modulating and monitoring the input, we certainly cannot control the output with any greater uh, frequency than what is coming in. So let's go to the first one. <clears throat> See no evil. A positive take on that is choose only to look at things, to watch things that are pleasant. So are you a news watcher? Are you somebody that is glued to the television set? <clears throat> I recommend you stop. There is a reason why you keep turning it on. It has to do with a form of an energetic negative, an, a negative energetic addiction. It's a form of um, literally, uh, how, how would we say it? It's almost like a, a feed. It's like a, you know, that cigarette, the person has to have that next cigarette. It's similar because of the negative energy feeds the, ne the negative energy. In order to wean yourself off of it, you literally have to cut it off. And you'll discover that you will still hear things here or there, but you'll also discover a far more peaceful heart. When we don't worry about all of the things that are happening in the world, then we can have a peaceful heart. The world will continue to move forward just as it is. Our vision of that news channel will not change the world, not even a little bit. When we watch that one thing or that two thing or that war or the famine or whatever um, the negativity they're talking about, this person murder, that person dying, you know, airplanes blowing up, whatever it might be, I'm not saying that there's not a value in understanding it. I'm saying there's not a value in the addictive nature of it. And so if you can recognize how unpeaceful your heart is after you watch news or after you listen to anything very unpleasant. You'll recognize first that you can't make any difference from your chair in that negative place. And secondly, that it, it would most likely impact you. What are your dreams like after that? Do you have dreams that are loving and kind and beautiful or are your dreams a bit unpleasant? Maybe no dreams at all. So we have to watch the input of what we see. Other things could be what we see around us. When we see things around us outside in the physical world that are unpleasant to see, we can, it, ignoring it is, is not, not um, appropriate necessarily. We, we want to be conscious of it, but we can address it consciously with love without uh, constantly watching it. There is a difference because when you work with Master Shah's wisdom, that everything happens at the level of soul, everything happens at the level of soul, then we have a great, great piece of understanding. Because if we know everything starts at soul, then heart, then mind, then body, then we can fix things at that level. That includes the heart level blockages. <clears throat> when we consciously choose to see things that are beautiful, pay attention to things that are nurturing to our heart, uh, and avoid seeing things that are unpleasant, then we are honoring our soul. Therefore, it can send more pure messages to our heart, messages of healing, messages of prosperity, messages of, of uh, honoring, messages of love messages of acceptance. These kinds of messages can and do continue to come to us, but we don't always hear them because our mind, our heart is cluttered because we have chosen to constantly watch unpleasant things. So this is an example. It's not about being unconscious of them or unaware of them. It's about making a choice so that we can be more of a uh, loving person in a loving place. <clears throat> Secondly, when we have an open heart, a, uh, an intention to not allow those unpleasant visual uh, things to enter, we can then choose to send love to those warring zones, to the orphan children, to the, uh, the places where there is very unpleasant and unrest. So our output is much, much higher. Do you start to see the connection? 
We want to make a difference, but if we're locked into it, we cannot. If we separate from the, um, the constant beating on our doors of the negative information, remain aware of it, but not pay attention to it on a constant basis, we elevate our frequency, which allows us in turn to elevate our service externally in offering love and compassion by our thoughts, by our words, by our actions, and by uh, even chanting love, peace, and harmony. The frequency of our external service can only be as high as what we receive. And so when we look at the first of the four keys, see no evil, or in a flip, uh, flip form, choose to see only the positive and focus on the positive and avoid seeing unpleasant things, we then have a much greater control over the peacefulness of our heart. Hear no evil. This is the second of the ones. And turning it into a positive, choosing to hear those things that are beneficial. There are many of us that have an internal voice, and sometimes an internal voice says unpleasant things to us. We must learn to not accept those as truth. There is something that I had read once, uh, not too long ago, and the person said, <clears throat> I, I had a unique ability to be able to step outside of my body. And he said, I would, I would be lying in bed and I would, I would float out, and I would see negative thought forms try to whisper negative things in my head. And he said, so I realized that it was not me. All this time I thought it was me. It was just a negative thought form. And so he said, I demand all thought forms that are not of my own origination to leave. He said he did this for months and months and months. So he got to the point where there was just silence, there was nothing else. When we are negative, we attract negativity to us. When we think or see unpleasant things, we attract those frequencies to us. <clears throat> when we speak and think in positive terminology, when we uh, communicate with love and compassion, we attract more of that to us. This is not uh, earth-shaking information, but it is very important to recognize that we do have control over what we hear. And a lot, oftentimes, the things that we hear inside can be very unpleasant. And very often, they are not our own thoughts. They are thoughts that basically connect to us on the airwaves. Have you ever been on a radio dial, AM or FM, and you, you tune a certain way and you can hear this radio station crossing over with this radio station? Okay. Very often in the old days, and this is showing my age, but they used to have um, telephone lines where you could pick up the phone and hear your neighbor talking. And uh, so this happens. We are energetic vehicles. We are in a world of frequencies and energies. And so we are absolutely impacted by negative frequencies. We are impacted by frequencies in general. So when we uh, take control over the things that we hear, both internally and externally, we will have a far more peaceful heart. The internal part is when you hear something that is negative internally, does it matter if it's, a, if it's a judgment about somebody else or if it's an internal judgment? That is not a positive thing. So you need to consciously say, this is not my thought. I choose to only think positive thoughts. I choose to only hear positive thoughts. Any words or messages that come to me that are not positive, any judgments or criticisms about another, that I generated or has come to me, I choose to adjust that now. I choose to change it into a positive now. What are you doing? You are being a conscious controller of the input. You are being a conscious controller of hear no evil, see no evil. We have to take control of what's coming in before we can uh, 
uh, settle down a peaceful heart, which allows us to control what goes back out through our thoughts, words, and actions. So that's the two parts that we must pay attention to on both sides of this uh, awareness. Also, when we're listening, very often because we are in a society with many, many people around us, we hear unpleasant things very often. You can simply be on a street corner and hear people cursing. You can hear people saying the F word. You can hear people uh, yelling at their spouses, traffic, honking, many, many unpleasant things. These create an unsettling of the heart. So what can you do about that? Well, you could do something very direct, like put in earplugs. Put in your sound piece and put on the music of love, peace, and harmony. Drown out all those things that are unpleasant if you have that choice available to you and there doesn't appear to be another choice. Another thing you can do <clears throat> is to Take yourself away from that. If you're in an office environment or an environment where, where it's toxic, where people are negative and they talk about each other, they do not say pleasant things. You cannot allow your ego of being part of the clique or saying something so that you're accepted to be the ruler of your heart. You know that it's unpleasant. You know internally that it's unpleasant. But if you allow yourself to stay in that place, you are allowing yourself to hear unpleasant things, which creates an unsettled and unpleasant heart. So by being a conscious uh, observer, by being someone, and you can say, one of the things Master Shah teaches is, he told us this, and it was so hard to accept, but he said, when you allow yourself to be in the presence of unpleasant communication, and you do nothing to, to create a condition in which it could stop, said so you actually create karma. That was not easy to hear. That was not an easy thing to accept. What do you mean? I create karma because I don't say nothing? It's not my problem. They're the ones that are arguing. They're the ones that are gossiping. Well, because we are interconnected, because we have a, a voice, we have the wisdom. This is where it boils down to. We have the intelligence and the wisdom, and we know better. And when we do nothing to assist that person to at least comprehend the, the, uh, the damage that is occurring by that gossip, we don't have to give him an entire dissertation. I'll tell you what he said to do in just a minute. The point is that if we have the intelligent awareness and we don't do anything, that's where the problem is. That's where we create the karma on ourselves. So what he suggests is he suggests, excuse me, I don't really wish to talk about this right now. It's not very pleasant. Can we change the subject, please? Now, those people might look at you and they might say, um, whatever, dude, you know, and just go back to the gossip. Okay. Now you don't have any karma generation. You try to change the subject. Now you physically move your body someplace else. This is an example of paying attention so you do not hear evil by being conscious of these opportunities to make better choices. And each time you choose not to see unpleasant things uh, that are constantly thrown at us, literally 24 hours a day, the, the, the frequencies of negativity are being thrown at us through, our, through any form of media on our cell phones, all forms of media on the internet, all forms of media on television and news and movies, and, and just externally on the streets. We're constantly being bombarded by unpleasant vision. So we must make conscious choices to not allow that in. Hearing is very, very similar, and that expands to what we hear in our own internal thoughts. Be conscious of those. Do not allow yourself to should on yourself. S-H-O-U-L-D. Do not allow yourself to should on yourself. You should do that. You shouldn't do that. You know, all that negative self-talk. Do not allow yourself to put yourself down. Do not allow yourself to, um, to be anything other than loving and conscious towards yourself. This allows you to maintain a higher frequency in your heart to have a peaceful heart. Do you know what a peaceful heart does? A peaceful heart brings you money. A peaceful heart creates calm, loving, 
uh, honoring relationships. A peaceful heart will bring to you your soulmate. A peaceful heart will solve a lot of problems. Why? How can a peaceful heart do these things? The reason why is because a peaceful heart allows heaven and Mother Earth and your soul to communicate with you and to align you to your original self, your Yuanshin, your original soul. The original soul is of the purest, highest level. And when we are uh, wallowing in these see no evil, hear no evil, think no evil places, we are in in massive disalignment. Therefore, we cannot receive beautiful, positive, supporting, loving messages. We cannot receive the message on what to do so that our finances are improved. We, we cannot hear that person over there, that's your soulmate. We cannot hear that because we're in a disassociation. So when we take the time to catch us, catch these things the way they come to us, full speed ahead, and choose consciously to not allow them to enter our world to instead convert them to a positive and thing then our input is controlled therefore allowing us to control what we think allowing us to control what we speak allowing us to control the actions because uh, the actions can be very violent we can lash out physically we can lash out tongue verbally we can lash out with our thoughts, okay? People, uh, hum and, I, and I say people loosely, but I say it from a personal perspective. I, uh, I would say that <clears throat> I was 100% ignorant of thought karma. But we must comprehend that just because we don't think anyone heard our thoughts, that it's not heard. <clears throat> thought creates an energy signal and that energy signal goes out like a very sharp dart just as sharp as the words that you say or don't say that there is no difference the the as an analogy <clears throat> they have proven time and time again that the basketball player that practices in his mind making the free throw hundreds of times in a row will go out there on the court and make it a lot more than the person that doesn't do that this has been proven time and time again the same wisdom applies. If we think a negative barb, it immediately shoots out no different than a verbal barb. The, the ability to control our thoughts, words, and actions start with controlling what the input is. When we have that peaceful heart, if we think of something negative, we'll actually catch it because our heart is peaceful enough to catch it. And we can recognize that this is not my thought. I give a soul order. Remember this. You can say this to yourself. I give a soul order to myself to release these kinds of negative thoughts, to only allow in positive thoughts, and to move myself to constantly think in a positive direction. You can repeat this soul order to yourself every day. And what it does is it it's just a form of manifestation it gives you the um, control when the negative thought forms enter without a gate and we don't be responsible for what's entering they then predominate our heart area they predominate our uh, uh, they, they they colorize what comes out they colorize what comes out of our thoughts and our words literally what our purest heart would never say comes out of our mouth sometimes comes through our thoughts sometimes because we allowed this negativity to come in over here and then it's it's settled in here and so then we speak or think it comes out in a very unpleasant way but we know that our pure self would not speak or say or think those things <clears throat> so when the when the great masters from the past say things like see no evil speak no evil hear no evil think no evil they don't expound upon them unless you go into the deeper teachings. But these are real life, conscious, present day examples of how we can be far more in control of these things. Okay?
speaking no evil. One of the greatest wisdoms that I have ever heard, and I had to hear it many times, came from my teacher, and he said, he said it in a way that I'd never heard it before. And I'm, I'm sure he was quoting a Chinese proverb. <clears throat> it wasn't something he invented. But nevertheless, it was the first time I heard it. And what he said was, there are three ways to say things. Always choose the best way. Most of us respond in two ways. It took me, I had to hear this many, many times before I, it really sunk in. And it, it will take you time, I'm guessing, as well. I hope it doesn't. But we literally have to catch ourselves. There are three ways to say things. Always choose the best way. <clears throat> the first way, typically, is, I'm right, you're wrong, blah! I'm certainly guilty of that and have done that far too many times. The second way would be um, keeping it inside, taking it personally. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess I shouldn't have done that. When in fact, it maybe had nothing to do with it. So there are those that are meek. There are those that just yell out and blame everybody else. And there's variables in between. Most of the time, the two ways that are chosen which has a wide range, <clears throat> have a win-lose or a lose-win scenario behind them. If you look at the forms of communication that have not worked out, there is almost always a win-lose or lose-win condition behind it. So what is the third way? The proverb is, there are three ways to say things. Always choose the best way. Think first before you speak has been said many times but there's an exact example of when you do that you feel the anger you just want to go ah, and you go ah, breathe out okay there are three ways to say things i am extremely angry right now because but da 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 and i'm right because but da 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 and they shouldn't do that because but da 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 that may or may not be true, but what comes out your mouth next will have a direct impact on the future moments that come after that. It could create more back and forth of that verbal unpleasant tennis match. It could create a departure of that other person you're talking to on a temporary or permanent basis. It could create an unpleasant sentence where you have to have that last barb and you hold on to that one thing that you've been holding on to for the last five years and you finally pull it out and shove that knife in their heart and therefore you create a condition where the relationship has a major hurt. These are the things that occur because our heart was already unpeaceful because we didn't pay attention back here. <clears throat> so you have to catch yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. And breathe. And say, what is the third way that I can say this that creates a win-win situation? And if you cannot think of that at that moment, then what is your choice? You, you choose what the Taiji master tells you. You choose what the Karate and the Aikido master will tell you, the true masters. They will tell you, walk away, run away if you need to. But don't enter the fight if it is not a situation that is a win situation. Well, we're not dealing with win-lose. We're dealing with win-win. And if you cannot have a win for both people and you cannot come up to that point at that moment, you need to walk away. Bring yourself back to a peaceful heart and think of a communication that would honor where you're at and honor where they're at. <clears throat> this often <clears throat> cannot be communicated well or lovingly until both parties are relaxed. So when we talk about speaking no evil, it is about catching your tongue, which always is precipitated by the thoughts, and the thoughts are precipitated by the imbalances in the heart. The imbalances in the heart are precipitated by all those previous things that we have heard unpleasant from that person or other people, thoughts, words, actions, uh, that we have heard prior to that. Hear no evil, see no think no evil. So you can start to see the interconnection <clears throat> about what enters, impacts our heart, and that impacts what exits. 
when we start to get control over this cycle, when we start to get control over how everything interconnects, we can start to be the master of our universe. We can start to be the master uh, and the creator of what we truly want. <coughs> Excuse me again. When we are not in this conscious role, then we are, for the most part, always in a lack of control, reactionary, defensive posture, uh, protective mode. If you're always in a defensive posture, protective mode, where your heart's closed and you're in pain, how can you possibly create a better future? How can you possibly create anything that you would like to create? Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter where your blockages are, <clears throat> they are simply not going to be created when you have an unpeaceful heart. And so the great teachings of the great masters, from the Buddhas to the Jesuses to the, to the Krishnas and all the great masters, <clears throat> they say these same things in their own way. And this is an example of some of the deeper wisdom behind it and how you can apply it in this common everyday life. So my challenge to everyone here is to make a conscious choice every day to not react when the kids push that button, to not react when you get a text from a friend and they might mean something but they really don't, to instead move to a place of love. Forgive yourself for the reaction. Forgive them for the unpleasant comment if it was something that was obviously unpleasant. <clears throat> Move yourself to a place of peacefulness and then ask yourself, how can I communicate in a win-win scenario, a loving way that is honoring to me and honoring to them? You have to stay in that place. It doesn't mean that they might not respond still in an unpleasant way. If you do your best and uh, the people you're communicating with do not respond in a pleasant way yet. You just need to go deeper into greater layers of love. <clears throat> Two times I have heard uh, about my teacher being in an environment in which um, there were a lot of students around him. And so that's why this was witnessed. I know he was like this otherwise, but it was witnessed in which um, somebody had gotten very upset with him. Uh, and in both cases, it was something to do with um, him doing a sharing in more of a public arena where other people who weren't part of the group were also present. And though uh, in two different occasions, uh, the people spoke up uh, in a very unpleasant manner um, because their buttons were pushed. And uh, my teacher said, I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. And at least on one of those occasions, that person, that was not okay for them. They really uh, was in a very painful place. Um, they were, you know, by themselves and obviously had a lot of pain in the heart. And so they proceeded to um, state some very unpleasant things for over the next couple of minutes. Uh, and my teacher would continue to respond with greatest love. I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. Now, it was a good example for all the students to see. <clears throat> but what happened was that person came down to a place of a peaceful heart because he was met with a peaceful heart. So if you find yourself unable to um, get in return what you are offering in terms of a loving communication, that doesn't mean you change. <laughs> that means you remain in that peaceful place and you continue to offer a win-win communication. Eventually, that other person or people will come to your level of a peaceful heart. Okay? All right. Let me tune in to what's next before we wrap up today. Okay. <clears throat> so I would like to uh, offer a blessing. This would be a, it's, it's, the blessing is too big, so I, it has to be short because it's such a big blessing. <clears throat> but I will offer a short blessing for releasing blockages associated with see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, think no evil. 
I then want to put on the table for anyone who is interested. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I will make available to anybody who is interested a crown chakra blessing for uh, one of those four. You can get all four if you'd like. Think no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. My first suggestion is think no evil. I will verbiage the crown chakra blessing uh, positively. Uh, it will be something like release the blockages that inhibit me from thinking positively. And when I uh, receive unpleasant messages, I easily convert them to a positive message. That's an example of how the crown chakra blessing would be verbiaged. And then uh, the individual who chose to receive that <coughs> would, uh, well, heaven would come through the crown of their chakra, literally do a rotor rooter on the negative mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, major blockages in the heart, and um, clean out those things that are inhibiting you from thinking in a more positive manner because that's related to the heart so when I say thinking people think brain but I'm t I'm thinking heart that's my message so and the the honor fee for the crown chakra blessing is a hundred so I will offer a short blessing now <clears throat> but if you're interested in a uh, full crown chakra blessing for this I can tell you it's priceless uh, it's a very fast way to eliminate a lot of negativity in your life and position yourself to have a more calm and relaxed heart. So everybody sit up straight, prepare to receive. <coughs> Touch your tongue against the roof of your mouth gently, feet flat on the floor unless you're in lotus position. Bring your thoughts, your mind, and your breath into your lower abdomen and prepare to receive. This blessing is as appropriate for all those that are watching, all those that are listening in the future, including on podcast. <clears throat> for the condition of making conscious choices to see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, think no evil. As appropriate, this is a one minute blessing. Just a moment, let me turn on my treasure. The blessing is so big. Blessing begin. <coughs> Hey, I you. Hey, I you. Hey, I you. Hey, I Thank you. Transmission, please return. <coughs> You're all very, very blessed. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So if anybody is interested in receiving a personalized crown chakra blessing to literally release mountains of negativity um, and bring to the surface the opportunity to think positively which will impact your thoughts words and actions and therefore create a positive cycle in your life 
contact me. Uh, my information is posted uh, above this video, and also Kristen has posted my contact information in her uh, in her chats. Thank you, Kristen. <coughs> and um, uh, it can be for any one of the four uh, blockages areas, um, and I can do a, a reading as to which one is most important for you. But um, I wish to apologize for all those who came in a little bit late. Uh, you missed a very good wisdom teaching and blessing, so please uh, watch from the beginning. There is a spot about uh, one minute long where it just stops working, uh, and then it comes back, so don't go away. Um, and uh, I wish to thank Heaven, Divine Tao Source, my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shah, all the angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, Lama Sifas, Guru, saints, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Jesus, Mother Mary, Namo Mitofu, Linguish and sure. Thank you to all the beings of light who offer their service. I'm very, very grateful. Countless bow downs, countless bow downs, countless bow downs. And I thank all of you for coming. Uh, thank you for hitting the share button and letting other people know about these uh, um, daily teachings. I'm here Monday through Thursday, same time, same place. I'm here to serve you. So I look forward to connecting with you. Until tomorrow, bye bye, everybody.